So as a consumer, you have many choices in uh, the products that you buy. And the products you buy could be uh, eco-friendly, maybe sustainable, maybe you just buy whatever is easiest to find uh, on the shelf. But what if we lived in a world where the manufacturers took some responsibility for these products? You know, after all, the manufacturers are the ones that are making the products, right? They have the choice to choose all the raw materials that go into your product. And then also, uh, you know, they'll develop it and then sell it to you, the consumer. So here at Bati, what we're doing is we're making eco-friendly sanitary pads. And why are we doing this? We're making sanitary pads, first of all, because only 12% of people have access in India to sanitary pads. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of people now are aware of the fact that only 12% of women have access to that. So they're also working on uh, distribution. And there are many, many companies working on this and awareness. And for us, uh, we said, okay, well, why don't we do something a little different? We're going to make a product that's available to everyone, but we should be responsible about it. We should make it biodegradable. We should make it eco-friendly. Uh, and ideally compostable, because that's the most eco-friendly uh, product could be. So in 2013, I started to talk to my co-founder about Sati. And in early 2014, we entered a business plan competition at Harvard, and we won. And this was great, because we then had the money to pursue our idea. So I moved to India in December of 2014. And I came here with an idea and a business plan, not much else. So I moved to India because previously in college I had taken a class where uh, it's called Diva and I had uh, come to India for the first time and I worked with an NGO in Uttarakhand and it was an amazing experience. I was here for about three months and we were developing all natural crayons, you can see in the photo. Um, and this experience was great in many ways, uh, but at the end, not only did I learn how to develop a product that was locally sourced and sustainable, but I also had a desire to come back to India. And for me, I mean, moving to a new country to start a new business, this might sound a little crazy. So where did I get the confidence to do that? Well, I had been volunteering with an NGO in the U.S. called the Society of Asian Scientists and Engineers. So what do they do? Well, they're about leadership development. Um, and for them, they have 60 plus collegiate chapters. Um, and they are teaching students about how to become leaders. So I was one of the, one of four Northeast regional, I'm sorry, one of four regional managers. And we were responsible for encouraging these chapters to develop and uh, start new ones. And we worked with them on all of the things that you would do in a founding an organization. What's your vision? What's your mission? Why are you even starting this organization? What do you want to get out of it? Personally, why are you even doing this? It's a lot of work, so why would you, uh, you know, take the time out of your busy schedule and, and sit here with us and think about things in leadership? So after having so many of these conversations over the course of two years, uh, and I, I started to you know, talk to the executive director about strategy and really have, have learned a lot of things about leadership from this. And I said, you know, it's about time that I go off and do my own thing. And I've learned about creating teams. I've learned about starting things from scratch. I've learned about uh, how do you think strategically. So that's where all of this came from. And um, then from there, I... Uh, so I moved to India, and when I got here, it wasn't that simple. I mean, I had to think about where did we fit in the market. We had come with an idea of low-cost sanitary pad machines, but there are already people doing that. So we had to say, okay, what else is unique about what we're doing? We're making a product that is made from banana tree fiber, and uh, you know, banana tree fiber makes this product biodegradable, but only partially. And I'm uh, very interested in making things that are fully biodegradable because I think that's more sustainable in the long run. 
So I said, okay, well, I talked to my co-founders and I said, why don't we, why don't we make something that's fully really biodegradable? And they said, well, but then we're going to have to start from scratch, we have to redesign the whole product, we have to redevelop it, and that's going to take a lot of time. And I said, yes, but I'm the only one that moved in here. So anyways, I have to start from scratch. I have to rebuild the team, we have to rebuild the product. So why don't we do it right from the beginning? So he said, okay, fine. We'll, we'll go after this and we'll make a fully biodegradable product. I had done a little bit of research also to make sure that it was feasible, but... In addition to that, you know, starting from scratch, this is a new thing for us. And uh, essentially, when I moved uh, to Ahmedabad, I had uh, started to build the team, recruit. Uh, by June, I had uh, my first employee and my first engineer, and we were off. And we said, okay, cool, this is great. But we only had three people, and we said, yeah, yeah, we're going to have the product in three months. Also a little crazy. But he said, okay. So, how are we going to get this product in Tima? So, we started chugging along, you know, getting materials, doing all this stuff, uh, finding interns, etc. And then we said, um, you know, this is taking a little bit too long. Three months later, we didn't have anything. No prototype to show for it. We, we had made some progress, but no prototype. So, we had to say, okay, maybe we need a change. We need to do something a little different. Um, so we decided to revamp how we work, and we decided to use this thing called a sprint. And a sprint is basically three weeks where you're taking into consideration, you know, there's a concrete goal at the end of those three weeks, and you have to uh, make sure that anything not related to that goal gets dropped. So all you're focusing on is that goal. So we do this thing called a scrum plan, where uh, we have scrum meetings, which are every day, um, and you're only allowed to stand, you're not allowed to sit, because it's supposed to be very short. So that encourages you to make the meeting very fast. Um, so we did these, and that was amazing. A huge change in our progress, how fast we were developing. And by December, we had our first prototype. But our first prototype was very rough. Um, um, in... Um, in developing this prototype, we had a, a team, and our team dynamic was very important. So, realizing that as we were building our team culture, we were really going to need to make sure that everyone felt included. And I think if you ask anyone who's worked with us today, they would tell you that the same thing, that it was like a family. And uh, this kind of environment that we work in, is very important to how we're successful because if we didn't have this culture, we wouldn't be able to get to where we are today. So our uh, our first prototype was, you know, a rectangular pad. It didn't look like anything we probably would have seen on the market, and uh, it didn't exactly uh, maybe seem like it would it would fly. But we had a few friends try it out, I tried it out as well, and we said, okay, yeah, it functions, but it doesn't look like a pad. So we worked on it for another month, and we got our prototype, and, and that was something that was completely different, completely new. And we were really excited, because then we were going to give it to all these people who had, we didn't really know, and that was going to be the scariest, but best test of whether this was going to work. So this kind of process that we went through uh, came from, an, from inspiration from my uh, senior design class at MIT. Um, at, in that capstone class, we had three months to go from an idea on paper to a prototype on a stage, which looked like you would actually pay for it. And, you know, in this class, uh, we were going through and developing the product, and we got to the point where it was two weeks before the final presentation. And we were making a walker that turns into a cane. So it was like a dual, uh, dual function product. And our product looked like this. So I don't know about you, but I wouldn't buy that. I mean, there's like, you know, there's too many moving parts. Maybe you get your fingers pinched. It doesn't look like something I would buy. And we all said, okay, well, uh, we have two weeks, and how are we going to make this happen? So we said, okay, let's, um, maybe we have to 
redesign from scratch. So this is a recurring theme, redesign from scratch. Okay, so now we have to uh, take this all apart, make a whole new design, uh, put it all together and see if we can get anything. Two weeks, we spent 24 hours, like somebody was working on the product. We took shifts and we just said, we've got to get this done. And our final result was this. So it looked, this is the kind of drastic change that we're seeing also in Sati with the, the different iterations of the product. And that's part of the inspiration behind the development process. So we, we said that this is how we're going to redesign the product and then uh, this, is, this is how we function right now at Sati. And this is where we're at. We have about an, another month or two uh, worth of work in terms of getting the product on the market. Uh, but this is where we're at. And to bring this story full circle, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about where this all came from. It all started with a list. A list of things that I had wanted when I left my job in the US. I, before I left my job, I made this list and I said, I need to make sure my next job has these things, otherwise I'm going to be in the same place as where I was before, where I didn't really enjoy what I did. So this is that list. Uh, mechanical engineering. We'll just go through each of them. Uh, so mechanical engineering, I mean, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, and I really wanted my next job to have a lot of this involved in it. Product development, I'm really excited about that. It's something that's really interesting to me. Social enterprise in India, very specific, but also something that I was really excited about due to the class that I took at MIT. An opportunity to learn and grow. I think this is really important. I mean, I really enjoyed learning about leadership, and I think that Forever, I will always look for opportunities to learn and grow. And this is just one more of those opportunities. I mean, starting a company is one thing, and starting a company in a new country where you're learning about the culture, you're learning about how to function. All of these things are new, and they're very, very interesting uh, to me as well. Uh, sustainable development. I think this is very important for the future, for all of us. I think all of us need to think about how we can be involved, think about different ways to help develop sustainably, help our society develop sustainably. I mean, for us, we're manufacturers, so we're thinking about it in terms of, just, of product development. But for you, whatever, uh, whatever career you, career path you take, think about how we can work together to uh, preserve what we have. I mean, the environment is what we live in, and if we don't take care of that, then we won't have anywhere to live. So this is very important. And then the last point is women empowerment. This is something we're still working on at Sati. We're not quite there yet, but we would definitely like to work with NGOs, uh, get these products to people in villages where they're not available. So this is uh, what we'd like to do. And I think the, the most important thing that I've learned in this journey is um, that if you have a group of passionate people, you can do anything. And how do you get that group of passionate people? You have to actually recruit them. And, but how? You, if you're working on something that has social impact or positive change, or you want to do something good in the world, I'm sure they will come to you. That is how we found most of the people that have worked at Sati to date. And we're really excited uh, to be able to work with them to make a social change. And when you're able to bring these people all together, you will have a force to be reckoned with. Thank you.